Hello. Uh, here you can see my DC64. Uh, it is small uh, computer here. Uh, the keys here does not work. But uh, I have uh, it, uh, another uh, Commodore 64. It's the C model. C64C. So it's not the bread bin, unfortunately. But uh, I'm running that on this small screen. And uh, I'm using it to test uh, uh, joysticks. So here I have a joystick. And then I can uh, uh, press the uh, fire button here, for instance. Uh, both uh, these buttons are fire buttons. And then, uh, yeah, there, it changed there. You have to press a bit hard here. And then you can uh, wiggle the stick. And this is then connected to port 2. That's the first column here. And then I have uh, this very strange uh, uh, that you should probably not show to your neighbors, but it looks like a hand grenade. Then you press here, and uh, it changes a bit there in the uh, second column. But maybe you cannot see that here in this small resolution. Uh, but these are the original Commodore 64 uh, joysticks from the time, uh, 19, early 1980s. But then... Uh, I can use this uh, uh, large screen here. Is the uh, uses this joystick here, and then uh, I can uh, go here to the uh, USB memory here. And then uh, I can uh, find a program here that's Joy Test. That's the same uh, as uh, before. So now we start that here. And now it looks the same and uh, I can uh, press fire here on this. This joystick uh, is included with the 664. It's a USB joystick. And uh, now this is also connected to port 2 here. And you can wiggle it and see here that uh, it works as it should. And uh, then uh, you can also connect the keyboard, this uh, IBM keyboard here. And then you can uh, use uh, some keys here. Uh, you can't see it here, but uh, for instance, if I press Control, that changes. Uh, Joystick uh, one, that's column two here. That will be fire space here. Um, this was a side effect because uh, the uh, uh, joysticks were connected to the keyboard matrix. But joystick port two is better because uh, it doesn't. Uh, interfere with the normal keys but joystick port 1 uh, presses some of the normal keys and uh, then uh, they have done some mappings here because as you can see the keyboard is not uh, the same here uh, as uh, this here this is US keyboard. Uh, my, uh, I'm uh, from Sweden, and this uh, is actually a US uh, keyboard Commodore, but I don't know what frequency it has, because this uh, monitor can probably handle both uh, NTSC and PAL, so I don't know what frequency this has, but uh, uh, this uh, model that I have of the C64, uh, this new one here, uh, it's 50 
hertz. And it was very difficult to find a computer monitor that worked with that because I have a lot of old monitors that I got from free from a school that were sending them to the junkyard. And then uh, I could pick up some monitors from there. But most of those monitors have the lowest frequency 55 hertz, so they don't work with uh, this 50 hertz uh, HDMI. So I had to use, uh, but I did find two monitors that did work, HP. Um, and they uh, sync at 50 hertz. But I use a, a VDA converter, which you can see this white thing in the middle. Uh, this converts HDMI to VDA, and I have a uh, an extension cable because uh, to that converter because otherwise it could fit in here, here but then I could not fit the stereo sound output uh, because that would collide with the uh, power input to the 64 mini uh, but it's a similar concept to this this here is also an uh, HDMI to VGA converter. Uh, you can connect it uh, using a HDMI to uh, DVD, but uh, that didn't work so well for me. It just becomes a small picture in the corner and that disappeared quickly. Uh, so it can sync better these low frequencies, 50 Hertz, if one uses a, a HDMI to VGO converter. And then, uh, since they have mappings here for the keys, then this key here that is called uh, run stop here, uh, that if I press that here, uh, you can say you can look here now, and uh, now I press it, then you see it stopped there. And then I do the same here, this, uh, I press uh, escape here. And then you will see that this stops here. Now I'll stop those programs there. And I can uh, type here uh, a list, so you can see it. So this is a very small uh, testing program for the joystick, and uh, I could type list here too. You can see here, with the same program. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you can also, now we have basic here. And you can program that. Uh, and uh, I did that because uh, this, uh, I can go here to the basic uh, exit game here. Now, one rather interesting thing here is that you can uh, save load games. So, here I have saved an earlier version of this, or uh, when it's running, then. And then you can load it here by pressing a button on the joystick. So now uh, this runs again. Um, then you can... Uh, so you can save the programs while they're running if you want to. Uh, I mean programs are always running on a C64 you could say, but not all programs are running in basic. Um, so here is basic and you have a, this is a, a programming language from the 70s or 60s perhaps, even 60s, yes, 64 I think. And uh, they have a short introduction here on uh, the website for the 64 Mini. And uh, I have to scroll here. So. Uh, you can learn a little bit here. 
and uh, you can learn how to save programs to the diskette that is automatically created if you have a USB memory connected. I have a USB memory here. And uh, it is orange. And then I've connected this uh, via a hub here. And, uh, yeah, oh. Now that it's connected to the C64 here. Uh, because this hub works well, it's an old uh, 1.1 hub. It doesn't consume that much uh, current. Um, yes, but uh, so it's uh, created a disk image automatically, and uh, then uh, you can, uh, if you make a program, you can change the name of that, and then you can make a special file that is uh, the mapping of the joystick because uh, you can have. A uh, assign uh, the keys of the C64 to the various keys of the joystick and then the joystick here has uh, it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 but the 8 key is a menu key so you can't use that for the mapping but you have 7 other keys and they, they you can say what they should mean in the game because some games have very strange mappings for instance uh, checkers I played uh, it used the F5 and F7 to go up and down and uh, that makes sense here but if you look at the ordinary computer keyboard it's more strange because then there are sideways not up and down uh, uh, yes so that's one way to program this, but uh, I could show, uh, I have for my real C64, I have this uh, cartridge Komal 80, and uh, that you can run here on the C64 Mini too. And uh, here, here we have this Komal 80. And then I made a bit uh, configuration for the joystick there too. Because then you can type some keys on the joystick. Because uh, this old keyboard doesn't have a Windows button. And the Windows button is used as the C64 button or the Commodore button here. Um, so I have to use a, a key on the joystick to type this. Uh, Commodore button, if I need to type that. And this is used as a sort of a shift key to type graphical characters. But here uh, we will soon get this other programming language, uh, Komal. And uh, I could insert the cartridge here too, but uh, then I have to fiddle there on the back side. But uh, if you do it on the real uh, Commodore 64, you have to turn it off before you attach a cartridge, otherwise you can destroy both the computer and the cartridge. But this is one alternative to program a high-level programming language. And it's uh, more simple than basic and uh, more modern, even though it's very old. But they were before their time, this programming language. It's similar to basic, but more like Pascal. and more structures and things like that, uh, programming structures and data structures. And uh, then we can see here uh, there are more alternatives. Uh, for instance, this is Simon's Basic. So uh, that's also uh, better than the ordinary Commodore BASIC because uh, it has uh, 
uh, more high level command for graphics and sound and things like that. And uh, also command has that too. And uh, you can see I have this cartridge here too. Um, and I could plug that in too here. Uh, then I have some cassette and I don't know if you can load that, but that was an extension to the Simon Spacex that made it even better. Um, so this, uh, I mean, it can load tape files, but maybe if you are inside a cartridge, maybe you cannot load a tape file from inside there. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but it's rather good as it is. Then you can move, uh, if you move to the left, you go to the most right, if you are at the left. Um, but I should show another alternative programming language, and that's, uh, uh, it's here, it's uh, uh, this 64 4. I think I have a bit old version of that. There is a newer one. Uh, it's written by TJ Zimmer. And uh, it's Fig Force. Uh, so, uh, in order to see the words here that the commands are called, you type VList. And there you also have high level command for sound and graphics so you can more easily write programs because the original Commodore basic uh, didn't have command for sound and graphics so you have to poke and peek and uh, call uh, machine language routines and things like that mm -hmm. okay so I think uh, this can also be a good alternative for people that want to learn to program and uh, they are uh, I mean this basic I don't think you learn so many bad things uh, I mean it's a, you could mean a bad programming style but you don't write that large programs uh, but most of the words are used in some programming languages for instance SQL structured query language uh, and then uh, uh, well for they are employing fourth programmers still it's rather popular for embedded systems still and uh, they write drivers and test programs and all things in it um, and uh, well Kumal is uh, a bit like Python, you could say, but maybe someone comes up with a cartridge with the Python, and then you could run that too. Uh, but of course, uh, they, it would have to be Micro Python or something like that. But I've not heard about it yet. But maybe one could have that. And uh, besides, this is uh, actually a ARM eight CPU inside this processor. Uh, this here. I mean, this only has 6510. It's a, uh, a 6502 with some extra IO pins. But this here, you could uh, run some other operating system with this. And, uh, but uh, someone has done this, but it's only experimental yet. But then you could get the Raspberry Pi instead. But uh, yeah, it's a different alternative. This, if you want to play these games, and then you can learn programming too. On this, uh, yeah. Then there is a group here on Facebook. There is also some uh, other uh, discussion group. So this is the C64 Mini group. And uh, yeah, they're friendly and apply the question there. And uh, and there was also Swedish uh, something about buying and selling 
computers, but it's also a discussion about the uh, corner computer there, and then uh, there are other sites also. And then uh, these old joysticks, this hand grenade and this TAC2, it's called, they can be connected in principle anyway to computers north of this C64 in the future, but right now it doesn't work with this, but it does work with this Windows computer and uh, Raspberry Pi, if I use Lubuntu 16.04. It didn't work in the latest Raspbian stretch. But uh, no joystick worked there, so this is, it's not a particular problem with this. It's, uh, they have something strange with joysticks in general there. But I have to ask Raspberry Pi about that in their forum. Yeah, so uh, this is, uh, I guess, all for now here. Um, yeah, we could back out here and uh, here, here, the signature. Of course, I could start the music here. It's, uh, so they have a nice soundtrack here. You can uh, play all the other games here. Um, well, I'm not so for these types of games. Uh, I'm more like ordinary uh, car games and uh, chess and checkers and four in a row and. Uh, reverse in such games but uh, and uh, I don't have them here they have uh, very special games here that normal people don't play with each other um, but uh, there is uh, all these games that I mentioned checkers and so on for these it's easy to four too so you can find them on the internet and uh, install them. Okay, bye for now.